second game on the A stream here. Darm one looking for a bit of redemption after a pretty rocky start in their first match, losing it to Rogue 7 2. And Darm one are going to be playing against the Brazilians. NIP once world champions, but now they've made a roster change. They, it's out with Julio and in with Wizard. Wizard has come in and started to play as their flex and secondary support player for NIP. And it's brought a new rejuvenation to NIP. We saw them stagnate a little bit in their results. It felt like not much was changing, not much was improving. Mm. But in this stage, something's in the air about this team. Well, you seem to think that in the present, they're looking a bit in better form. But if we cast our minds back, to me, it feels like every single event with the ninjas in pajamas, the gods flip a coin and it's either they are winning it or runners up or they're down bad in the, the bottom going out early in groups. You look back, six invitational 21 champions. After that, Mexico out in groups. Sweden major, second place, SI out in groups. Charlotte didn't even qualify. So it's about time, I think, for them mm -hmm. to go and win an event or something. <laughs> The cycle of life it would be for NIP. Sometimes they're up there, sometimes they're down here. But it would trend that now they're going to have a good stage if if the gods say so. Map band's just come out as well, and they will be taking us to Clubhouse. All right, let me do a bit of a sneaky Ooh. sneaky. Have a look at me notes. All right, Clubhouse is a pretty even map for Darm1 and a very, very strong map for NIP. In fact, well, with the exception of them actually losing it in the Copa Elite 6 to W7M, 6-8. It was when they got knocked out of the Copa Elite, so that was essentially NIP's seeding match to come into this. Um, but at least for Dumb 1, it's not bank. Because I think that yep. going back to bank after what we saw against Rogue is probably a good thing. Yeah, I think I'd agree with that as well. But like you said, Deb, NIP, they look not too bad on Clubhouse. They look like they know how to play it. They've got a history on it as well. And we said that about Rogue on bank as well. We said that Rogue did very well in the veto. And once again, I'm starting to lean to the fact that maybe Damwon haven't prepared for this veto as well as we think that they have. Well, it's funny that because uh, we had a bit of a comment, a bit of a chat with some of the other casters uh, off air before this game started talking about that Damwon Rogue game, reflecting upon it. And there was a, you know, a couple of comments sent around like, Damwon didn't look ready for that game. They didn't look prepared. They didn't look like they'd done the necessary prep work to be ready for their opponent. Well, they better have done so here because uh, this group is not going to be easy, right? You've got Exet, you've got Rogue, who don't want to have already lost to. NIP... With how hit and miss they've been, they're the team that realistically Dam One need to beat. So it is a last ditch effort for Dam One to get a dub today and NIP's first game here at the Berlin Major. So let's get stuck into it. Let's see who's going to take it. It is, believe it or not, a rematch from 12 months ago where these two teams were in the same group at the Mexico Major. Dam One was the victor in both of their matches, but certainly not the victor here in the community vote with most of you on the Ninjas fan side. Very, very interesting and something that I would honestly, I think I agree to, I lean into as well. I think Damwon Kia, they look like they're not as up and about as they used to be. NIP, they look like they're on an upwards trend as we've been speaking about. The map veto looks like it's gone in their way. It all feels like NIP so far. Yeah, and indeed NIP get the very first ban as well here on Clubhouse. I don't feel like Clubhouse is really swaying to one side or the other, but I want to say that Darm 1 have their work cut out for them, right? NIP should be the favoured team here. Uh, if Darm 1's form of their first game is anything to, to go by, seven rounds in a row is a pretty devastating blow. Like, how do you get back on the horse after something like that? Well, they've had their break. They've had their time to do a group huddle, have a chat, try and figure out what has just gone wrong for them to bring back the mental going into this game. Now, how hard would that be? I imagine it incredibly difficult to try and pick up, I guess, pick up the pieces, come back straight into another major match. Very important, of course, against NIP. It's a big challenge for them. And uh, look, I would re love to read into the glass band, but I got the feeling that this is not the legit ban. If you were reading the chat, you can see that these teams are, I don't know, having a bit of a, a yarn about the settings or what have you. But when we do eventually get into Clubhouse and we see the operator bands come through, I'm going to be looking at Ninjas. You know, they won Clubhouse against FaZe, a very, very strong team, 8-7 in the Copa Elite. And it was the only map that they won against FaZe in that match. 
uh, I feel like NIP come from such a competitive region, right? There are so many strong teams down in Latin America. You're a bit of a, a Latin America fan, go yourself. I, I, I have heard thoughts on Clubhouse and how the meta has evolved down there. Ooh, I feel like this is a tough one to call. I think in general, the meta has been very hold every, absolutely everything, everywhere. <laughs> and so you can't rely on those anchor holds in the basement anymore. It's, it's just gone up very much out of fashion, you know? And so I think for NOP, it really leans into the way that they play. They are, I, so I suppose they're upcoming and the rejuvenation in the roster. But Damon Kia, something we saw on Bank that they just played was that they didn't really lean into that total map control, yeah. total dominance, as much as I thought that they would. And it makes me feel a little nervous going to Clubhouse as well. Yeah, it was a bit strange to see Damwon usually such a confident and dominant team. And on bank against Rogue, they were forfeiting so much ground. In contrast, going into to this game against NIP, they really need to, to come out of the gate swinging. If Damwon have a, a, like, they've had a bad first game, all right? That's in the past. If they have a bad first day, how much worse is that? To me, it feels like that is a hell of a lot worse. If Damwon lose to NIP here, the only team in their group they're yet to verse is X set. And I just, like, if, if Damwon lose this, it's pretty hard to imagine they're making it through to playoffs. That's kind of where mm. we boil down to. Mm. I think I'd agree with you on that one as well. At the beginning, we had them as the contenders to make it through, and now we're really starting to cast these doubts onto Damon Kia. On the side of NIP, though, I, I really like this team. I think I, as I've watched these guys over Latin America, I really appreciate the the flow that they have going. Their team comms in, in the Brazilian league, we do get to hear a little bit of their team comms. And now I can't understand a word that they're saying, I will not lie, but the way <laughs> they conduct themselves, there's no overlap, there's no overcoming. It feels very clean. Even in positions that might be intense, they take the time to problem solve very well. And so going into this matchup, I've got some high hopes for them. And IP, historically known to be a really, really chaotic team. Mm. Uh, and you know, they ha have been together for a five roster, and at Minus Wizard, who is recent joined, for a very, very long time. And you know, I'm looking here, Pino joined almost three years ago, wow. right? That was the previous roster change. And then Wizard, he has only been on this squad for two months. So he is very much fresh. And with NIP right now, you can see the, the team is getting riled up and doing their little high fives and stuff as we get back into the roster and uh, back into the game, rather. It's going to be a bit of a proving ground for Wizard, who's never played at this level before. Well, it seems like not quite going back into the game bam, just bam. yet. Damonkia are back on the attack. And, well, Damonkia are actually starting out on the defense. I feel like that is something that we should have a chat about, though. Sure Damonkia on the defense. They didn't look great on bank. On Clubhouse, it's a different map. There's different philosophy. Will it translate or will it, will it fix itself? Yeah, I don't know. It's a tough one. Um, Dom one, I feel like the fact that they started so slow at, their st at the start on their attacking side really did... Uh, it punished them. Um, and that made it... Oh, sorry, they started on the, their defensive side. And that punished them and it got the, uh, the rogue side a bit more confidence. If we look at Clubhouse stats, Dom One are actually quite significantly a defender-favoured team. 57% defensive win rate, only 46 on the attack. Uh, and for NIP, it's not quite a similar story. They have that 57% defensive win rate, but they actually win a lot of their attacks, 64% win rate on their attacking side. So NIP are not afraid of taking teams to Clubhouse and starting aggro on that attack. Mm hmm. That is very interesting to start off on. Damwon here, have they made a mistake going onto the defense? I feel like, especially coming off the back of that last game where they looked so timid on their defending half, something has to change if they wanted to take it to NIP. These guys press the attack so hard, they take as much real estate as they can. They are from Latin America, after all. These guys are so quick on their feet. It could be a bit scary for them, but of course, it is a different map. It's a different game. It's time for a reset, and that's exactly what Damwon Kia need. One curious thing, talking about attack and defense aside, obviously, like, so NIP got the final ban, therefore Damwon got to pick that they started defense. NIP got to pick that they where they start on in overtime, and they actually chose attack. So it mm -hmm. shows that NIP are actually really confident on their attacking side, as if it does get down to that round 15, that's where they want to go. 
Absolutely, and now heading straight into the game, the first band to go out will be Hibana. Getting those hatches open will be made a little bit more difficult. Lines of sight perhaps on the garage will be made a little bit more challenging. So far, will it be Thatcher? Will it be Maverick? Thatcher will be the one taken out, so we're going to see a Maverick game of Clubhouse. Tricking the walls, jacuzzi, wall kennels, wall, whatever it might be, a very standard way to clear through the map. Uh, it seems like you know, Maverick Clubhouse versus Thatcher Clubhouse, it's gone in and out of fashion. Uh, the Maverick, very, very powerful. I wonder if we'll see the Kaid ban or whether that will slip on through. Because with Hibana banned, I don't know, you're going to be running that Maverick a lot mm. of the time anyway, but you can six pick, uh, repick off of it. There you go. This feels kind of old school, Mandy. This does feel very old school. And something to note is that there are some very important operators that have been left in. Azami, for example, has been left in. We've seen a lot of teams leverage the architecture of the map with those keeper barriers. And on top of that, like we can see Thunderbird, lots of people have liked playing that on the basement mm. as well. It's a very popular operator. And more importantly, Kaid as well. Whether they're going to trick the hatch, keeping some of them closed, having to dedicate two Selma charges to a hatch means that you have such limited options. Attackers need to locate and defuse as many bombs. Defensive side will go for Kaid. In fact, it looks like a pretty strong bunker down setup for Dom 1. And everything here speaks to fortifying that base group, whether it's the Asami to create some strong positions to hide behind, the Jaeger to keep you alive playing those positions, and the Thunderbird as well. The Kaid to keep the hatches closed and the smoke just, just you know, do what smoke does best, burning down that time in the late round. It makes me wonder if we're going to see a roam at all from Darmon. I do feel like they should. I would agree with you. I think that they should even if go. it's a light thing, but we have to see into lobby. On the side of NFP, I feel like they've read into Five this quite to well, to be honest. They haven't gone and re-picked off to some big roam clear operators. We Attackers don't see Jeff or whatever. They're actually the bringing the double hard, triple Ooh, hard reach even. Oh, hang on a second though. Oh no, he looks away at the wrong time. Ah, oh, yes. But anyway, like, NIP, I think they have all the tools in the arsenal to open up the site that Dell and Kia are trying to keep closed. Yeah, it's very true. Triple hard breach in the Thermite Maverick Ace combo does leave nades a little bit less present. No Finka. Finka has been a mainstay, as everyone is talking about these days. Gone for the Zofen Sledge instead. Oh, come on, surely you'd take out that Finka camera. It's actually big if they don't take out this default camera. That's so much information onto where the push is coming from. NIP now starting their room. Oh, wow. It does actually seem like Rin is looking for a bit of a room into bar, just taking down a drone, but will fall off. And now all five down on Kia plays back comfortably inside of the site. NIP can start to get to work on these hatches, push through that mid round. And in fact, there's two whole minutes left of this round. And it looks like they're pretty confident that they've cleared the whole map now. So it's time to get to work on the vert for Kitchen. You can see Woogie Man's got impacts to try and prevent this kitchen hatch from being open. You chuck an exothermic or an ace somewhere on there, it's going to be very difficult to get that detonated successfully while there's an Azami with impacts below. Well, I can only imagine with the hard breach that they've brought and the limitation on not having Hibana, that perhaps they might not even contest the kitchen hatch. We can see blue hatch being opened straight away. Wizard is making his way through bar, but it doesn't even look like they're going to try for the hatches. Kamikaz is opening up Moto. Perhaps a triple take is on the cards for NIP. Yeah, is there any wall denial on this triple wall? Not from what I can see so far. Rin's done an excellent job taking down the drone. There's already four taken out from NIP, but with that hatch on Moto opened up, Dom One forced back into the site. NIP now shaping up for what could be a very explosive execute onto the triple wall. A C4 being prepped by Rin for that bottom main stairs push. Dom One here, it feels like they have a pretty good read into what NIP are trying to do now, just holding on for dear life to these anchor positions. And look at the time burn here from the smoke. The gas goes out very early from Coded. Try and slow down this push. Those Azama Kiva barriers make it very difficult as well for NIP to get these long lines. But finally, action starts to erupt. Katsang finds the first pick, moves, he goes down. Wizard from the bottom main stairs finds his own. But the time is dwindling away to 25 seconds left, and this triple take has not really gone to plan. The wall is still closed. Down one Kia plays are still in the anchor positions. What are they going to do? Katsang. Holding on to this moto position. Wookie Man is the player to step up though. <gasps> Yas went for a flank and he's come all the way down the main stairs. It's a disaster for NIP. And there's nothing that Psycho can do about it. A strong opening round from Darm One. 
After losing seven rounds straight to Rogue, they're finally back. In the end, the anchor fortified position for Down One Kids has worked out in their favor off the back of a pretty impressive roam flank from Yas right in the late game, just as NIP were cluttering their comms, trying to make something happen. Yas went, all right, now is the perfect time to go and get up in their face. And they're not going to be thinking about me. They're going to be thinking about how they're going to get into the site. And that's exactly what he did, bringing the ground in for Down One I mean, I didn't notice. I don't know if Medics noticed, too, <laughs> our observer. It was, uh, he was so sneaky that he snuck up by every one of us. But uh, yeah, no comment from our observer, he says. Well, for NIP now, they are starting on the back foot. They need to get back into this game. They're starting on the attacking side, which, yeah, perhaps is going to be a bit more difficult. But with how that round went, you've got to think Dom One are looking so much more in the driver's seat here. Absolutely, they look much more confident that that push that Yas went for. I don't think we would have seen that confidence in the last series. It feels like a reset has come for Damwon Kia, and they're back in on it. They're willing to take these fights, and that's something that is so important. This mental game over this major. Attackers objective is to defuse a bomb. If you're a Damwon fan, no doubt it's going to be a bit of a relief to see that they finally got back onto the scoreboard. That road game was rough. There's no other way to, to hack it. For NIP, though, and for the passionate Brazilian fans that have watched them finally make a return to the Major, there's a lot of high hopes hung upon their shoulders as well. Gym and bedroom defense. Dom one holding on quite aggressively. Look at this position from Woogie Man, waiting for someone to open up the hatch, hoping he can find something with that shoddy. But for NIP, it's just pretty staple. CCTV across take, and they've made good progress thus far. I like this from down one Kia. Cash and CCTV seems to be a site that's gone out of favor nowadays. It's, it's starting to become more attacker sided, so they've gone up. We're just going to leave the Jim Bedroom instead. Oh, oh, the shotgun shot almost connecting onto Pino, but he's in and out just like that with the sledgehammer, not risking his life. Down one Kia actually deciding to reinforce off the rotate going into Logi, making the push from NIP just a little bit more claustrophobic and holding on to that anchor position for as much as they can. Now the only thing they need to worry about is that hatch drop. They don't even need to worry about the sweep. Getting in the building now. Changing Starting match. to take that map control. Drones Up have already gone located. out. Kamikaze has moved his way forward. Taking cash control. Still a bit worried about Con. Damon Kia below. Ooh, have a look at this one from Pino. Temps fate. Go with the nade. Yas, I think, reads into it and tries to block up that position. But Rin's actually downstairs and he's looking for a fight. NIP, though, they've made their progress inside of Connor. Selma charge to reopen up that rotate, going to construction and on the left side of the wall as well, so you can get a little bit of a deeper line of sight even from the windows into this particular position. That's some right over the infantry. Oh, wow. I think it is successful. It's another Selma charge to go down. Does they have another impact? Oh, it doesn't seem like it. And now the Selma charge will go down. A rotate has been made, going to Logi, amounting for this execute. NIP, where is the execute that we couldn't see in the last round? A lot of work to be done before that. Yas survives that nade, not quite cooked enough. Rin is also below with the C4 and great use of the Kiba barriers once again, delaying time. But Pino says, that's not going to delay me much at all. Yas says, here, have another one. Kamikaze, though, he's just found the first pick for NIP on Takota. That's one of your anchors going down. You see Rini going down. Although the wall's only oh. just getting open. There's only 30 seconds left, but the, the onslaught is starting to come through from NIP. The entry on through logistic office, what? and you blink and you miss it. NIP everywhere, all at once, all of the time. And they do get the first round. Well, I just cannot believe how that round went down. Down one here, they looked very conservative in every single way. They reinforced forced off the rotate very early. They were sitting in these anchor positions behind reinforcements, behind shields and Kiba berries, very, very quietly and conservatively. But somehow, NIP are able to find these cutoffs. We saw the Maverick hole on Jacuzzi Ward cut off main stairs. We saw the pressure from the window Defenders, from Pino. Everything, bomb. the pressure Defy starts to mount into Down one here, and tiny positional mistakes opened up the round for NIP. Down one though, they're not going to dwell too much on that gym bedroom defense. They're going to rotate now. Go to bar. Bombsite has started to come into a bit of favor. I, The jury's still out for me on this bombsite. I don't know if you have any specific thoughts, Mandy. I love the idea, but the execution's not always perfect. 
Well, what Damwon Kia seems to be looking for here is they, they've lent into the Echo with those two yokais. And I imagine the Echo is probably going to be hiding some of the peskies that be hard to take down as LAP try to problem solve and dissect the map. They're going to leave it too late. We can get, jump on those yokais, deny the plan, that type of thing. It seems to be the formula for Damwon Kia is this anchor-centric hold that they seem to be doing on every single side that we've seen them play today. Is that the right play when you're going against a team like NIP that are just they're seemingly playing quite methodically to be honest. Like it's a lot of droning, it's a lot of slow pushing. They're not quite as fast as Rogue were. But it, it does make me wonder, maybe if Damwon got a little bit more in NIP's face, it would slow them down even further. I think I'd have to agree on you on that, but that's not the way, that's not the Damwon Kia that we are seeing in this lobby currently. NIB is starting to get their way into the map. The logistics hatch being opened up first. And it seems like a roam through the top floor will be on the cards for down one here and will be the first point of contest for NIP if they want that to the control. There is the opener. It's Yas on the Oryx upstairs. Finds Muzi. Takes a bit of damage for his trouble, but not taken out as of yet. Really pushed low by Pino on this con window. But he does manage to survive. Rin's upstairs as well as, w in fact, four players up here at the minute. No one's gone down as of yet, making it so difficult for NIP to sink their teeth in. Ooh, oh, and a jump out as well. Coded to take down Pino. That's one of the two hard breaches going off the board. And really, NIP have not managed to get that much control to the top floor. We can see Wizard uh, Wizard and Kamikaze now making their way in. But to find what these M1 Kia plays, they're comfortable on the other side of the map. Wow, look at that. Aggressive yokai usage from Katsum using that to get a bit of extra information. Mujama goes down, that enables the breach on the external con wall. Kamikaze has made his way right up and close to the site. Bit of a Syria gate to deal with and a lot of lines of sight, but this is a strong position as NIP want to get that wall open. And there's only a minute left as well, and not enough players to deal with Katsang on the basement. Yas even knows, okay, the next step, the win condition, is that Yokai drone. If they go for the plant, I'm going to go protect Katsang. Ooh. That's exactly what he's doing now. Ooh, Psycho almost connecting the shots, but it feels like down on here, they're a step ahead of NIP. Two players ahead as well. Looks like it's going to go their way. Coda's position's been revealed, and now he's stuck between a rock oh. and a hard place. Perfect crossfire from NIP. And they start to bring this round back from the dead. You're right though, keep these yokai drones in mind as the execute goes through from NIP, it's Kamikaze. Starts to plant. What is the play from Damwon? This is when they need to get into it, but the bait is perfect! It now comes down to Yas, who is also shut out of the round! NIP have made Damwon work for it! From a 3v5 to a 3v1. This is just unreal from NIP. I cannot believe the way that they managed to bait out the Yokai drone. Kat saying now, one versus three, Attack. rounding the corner. Attack. Oh, he does take down the first Osa shield, fight. but another one to follow. Difficult position for him to be in now. The one on two. And Psycho knows he doesn't need to peek it here. Psycho <gasps> loses the fight. It's a 1v1. How has Kat Sung made this possible? Wizard to cover from above, but there is no chance that Katsung wins this. The perfect bait, and Wizard knows that he has won it. He might be the newbie on the roster, but he knows exactly how to play that position. And a good round from NIP. Bring it back from the depths of defeat. That was just the most ingenious possible way to come back into that round, don't you think so? They knew, okay, we don't have the resources to clear our top floor. Let's not do that. Let's press the attack onto the site. Okay, we know the yokais are about to hit us. Let's deal with that. Let's put down the Osa shield, go for the plant, bait it out, shoot that yokai drone. Wizard went, all right, that means they're going to go for the retake. I'm going to cut it off with my nomad. I'm going to be in the right attack position and hold on to that top floor. He did that perfectly. Everything, when I thought that downward here was a step ahead, actually, it was Nip that had the read on top of that to... I just deny the retake that Damwon Kia were trying to go for. Picture perfect for NIP, and that starts to cast a bit of doubt into down one. We've seen this before, they might start strong. they got to make sure that they can stay composed when they start losing these rounds, losing the ones that they probably shouldn't have lost. I'd count that round among them. They're not going to dwell on that side, though. A failed gym defense, a failed bar defense. Funnily enough, though, in a church arsenal down the basement, that's unlocked now. Damwon, instead of going back to it, they're going to try a fourth different bomb site. 
I feel like that's okay from them. They want to give us the world tour, do I don't mind from that. I like to see all of the bomb sites being played, and once again, down one leaning into quite a strong anchor hold. We actually have Wookie Man on the Clash. I wonder how that's going to be used in this round. Well, it's a, a round of shields, it seems. You got Clash, you got Ossa, and you got Monte. Oh, <laughs> this. Not every day you get to see two shields in the round, let alone three. So this is going to be a pretty hectic one. Surprised to see NRP didn't pick off of some of these shields, particularly the Monty, when they saw that clash. Oh, and this is really fascinating from Dan One Kier. They're actually playing Wookie Man and Coded inside of Rafters as their Rafters duo. I don't think I've seen anything quite like this. This is very unique. Dove, I don't really know what to expect coming out of it. The walls only just getting open. Drones haven't gone through yet. NIP, I wonder what they're going to think when they see this. This is a very peculiar setup, but NIP have made good progress. That's the bottom of Garage breached. And the main wall should be breached very shortly as well. Here you go indeed. The Maverick remove the reinforcement from the wall. Won't take much to get rid of the rest. It's going to be Pino to rotate over and try and Reload. take out that soft wall with his sledgehammer. NIP in a pretty strong position, but like you said, a bit of an X-Factor setup. Down one, and Rin is keen to make a play. Uh oh Muzi has just seen the player at the top of rafters, the Clash, starting to ping out these players on this Kennel's balcony and Osa Shield once again. NIP are leaning into. It's very stagnant right Ooh. now. Oh, a standoff, but it actually takes out both Osa Shields with one C4. Oh dear. NIP, miscalculation perhaps. Yeah, and with the Monty losing a lot of HP there as well, the shields that NIP have brought are looking to be somewhat ineffectual. Wookie Man has now rotated. He is going <laughs> to harass. Psycho on that Montane. NIP looking a bit lost now. This is a very tough round for them to come back in. Well, they completely pivoted their push to the other. Oh, goodness wow. gracious me. Challenging all the way from Spawn. Wizzy has a 2x, though, and Wizard will actually take someone down as well. NIP, they've changed their push. They're going for a con side instead because this breach is so heavily contested, and it might work out for them. Oh, but Wizard punishes Rin. Dom Juan, you didn't need to do anything, and now you've given away two picks. Psycho's losing a lot of HP though, but Wizard might be able to bring this game back. Clutched out the last one. His nade doesn't quite find what's needed. Wookie Man taken down so low by his teammates. Gas oh, the wall beautiful. bank from Muzi. NIP is taken it by Storm. And only a two versus five situation as well. Yas is able to collect oh. up one, but Muzi to collect the second. Wizard, the man of the hour to close it out for NIP. Three rounds up now. What a game this has been for the Ninjas. Even when they're looking rough, they bring it back. They do. Darm one, let the Ninjas back into that round, and NIP said, we will take every opportunity you give us. What a good start from the Brazilians. And you can hear them, you can see them. They are one of the most animated rosters in Rainbow Six. They know exactly how to rile themselves up, and they use that energy as rocket fuel. And I'm a big fan of the way that NIP are playing with Damon Kia. Don't you think so? Every time they do an attack, Damon Kia feel like they have a read. They feel like they have a grip onto it. They go to contest NIP, and then you have a bunch of their plays go off, rotate somewhere else, put the pressure on a place that they're expecting Damon Kia to be rotating through, and they get just distracted by their teammates, mm -hmm. really. And they're playing with their food. It's incredible. How about that position from, I believe it was Muzi on the Ossa, all the way back uh, in the kennel spawn on those rafters. What a long angle for him to play. Unusual position. And just have a look at that scoreline. You wouldn't think it after the, the rounds that we've had and how close they have been. NIP is actually up three to one. Damn one, what's going on today? Just feels like Damn one here. They're getting a little bit in their heads. They're getting a little bit greedy, trying to stop a push from NIP and not realizing that someone else is there to punish them. This NIP attack is so multifaceted that Damn one here just can't think that many steps ahead. Now though, they are going to take us back to the church and Arsenal bomb site. They held this one pretty successfully. Yeah, despite there being not much of a roam until Yasta's very late flank. I do wonder if NIP is going to be able to read into Dom one as this game goes on because they certainly read into them in that previous round, punish the aggression, the late round from Dom one Yas is just on for the drone hunt at the moment. NIP have managed to keep four of their five alive for now. I see a lot of operator switch-ups as well. The Ying coming in, no more Thermite. 
This could be interesting. Perhaps they realize we don't need as much hard breach to go on that triple wall. We've already got the Maverick for the hatches. We've got the Selma charges for the wall. Whatever. Let's just bring in the X Factor of the Ying. Damon here once again leaning into this anchor centric hold with just one or two roamers going off on their own and NIP up for the map clear. Luzi on to end the garage. As the drone goes out, there is indeed a roam. It's Yas on the top floor. And he is ready to go with the Thunderbird, spear in hand. He's right around the corner uh -oh. from that Maverick. What a pick this would be to take down the Maverick when the Electric Claws are still on the hatches. If Yas only knew how close he was, he's got support as well from the Secret Stairs. But if he loses this fight, <gasps> it's devastation for Darm1. And NIP once again kick things off. It's just gone from bad to worse as Rin has been down and out. NIP have taken full charge. And last time we watched this site, it was Yas that was the playmaker to go for that flank and bring that around from Damon Kia. Now you've got three sitting ducks on the site. You've got the sledgehammer in the hands of Pino to try and choke them out, get that triple wall open. There are so many options for them to choke out the Stevens. And this Claymore here, don't underestimate it. That will stop a flank up that garage ladder. Dead in its tracks. And in fact, Muzi punishes some aggression from Katsung on the blue stairs. Damwon can't help themselves. They know that if they don't make a play, they are doomed. But it's a doomed if you do, doomed if you do, doomed if you don't scenario. 2v5 now. And NIP, patience of a saint. Woogie Man looking to repeat the same sentiment as his teammate oh as he goes God. for Mainstay's push, but Wizard is just way too aware. Now coded in the one versus five. It's not looking good for down one, but he's able to collect All one. Right. He's able to collect two. Coded. He could bring this one back. That's been nice though. And IP have to play this perfectly. Muzi's inside. Oh, sprays oh. him down, and that's all that's needed. NIP, four rounds in a row. Dumb one. Shut out of the game. The ninjas are fired up. This feels very reminiscent of the last it series does. that we just cast a dev down one. They started out strong as well in the last series. They set the tempo. But as the game went on, they crawled into their shells. NIP really playing with down one Kia at the moment, punishing them for the real estate that they're giving them. It's not working out in their favor. Makes me wonder. Sometimes the down one just Attackers have to cut their losses, right? The right? I think down one have this mentality. Oh, okay. We, we lost two players early. And now it's a 3v5. We have to make a play. But NIP know that, and so they're ready for it. And so every time you do make a play, you, you're gone. It makes me wonder, did Dumb One just have to sometimes cut their losses and say, all right, we have to play this as a 3v5, let's do it. Don't keep making aggressive plays, just have faith that in the late round we'll be able to capitalize. Well, it's a hard balance to find, don't you think? So, yes, you do need to make that hero play at one point because in the end, yes, you are going to get traded out if you sit there. But what it is, is about finding the timing, the right timing to do it. Now, we saw Yas do it, but we haven't seen any other Dumb One key play be able to find that timing as successfully. And as a result, it just ends up them being them lining into, running to someone that's cutting off their line of sight or something like that. Now they're going to go to Jim and Bedroom. This is a repeat. NIP, they had a pretty explosive execute onto the site. All the cutoffs worked out in their favor, and well, it worked out for them in the end. This time, though, Damon Kia, they're pressing the roam a little bit harder on the other side of the map. Yeah, in fact, it looks like a bit of a banner juggle from Rin. I quite like that. If NIP don't drone it, they might lose some of their valuable hard reach early on. Wizard's not going to chuck any Selmas on down. Kamikaze is droning. He sees this wall. On Jacuzzi is free real estate. He's just going to chuck that on. Detonate needs the exothermic. Woogie Man aggressively peeking. What? A bomb How? Been located. Where? <laughs> Medics, if you can tell me where that was, you get a gold star. I believe that Pina must have just been out on the window, exactly, on the balcony, on the windows, just putting in that pressure, punishing any Damon Kia's players that might be running around the site, not checking the doors and corners, I suppose. Now All the right. wall has been awesome. open, and NIP have been very successful at this round and round again. They always enter into the point and press pressure onto the point that Damon Kia are not holding yet. It forces the Damon Kia players to have to deal with it. And then, oh, look, yes. There it is. The timing could not have been worse. Muzi comes and backstabs him, and they'd up through the hatch. Down one once again, finding themselves in a 3v5. And Ninjas in pyjamas playing it so patiently. The vertical made from Psycho, very close to taking down Coded. Down one, you can visibly feel the tension in this roster as they just walk continually 
into the line of sight of NIP. And how genius is this from NIP as well, right? Kamikaze went, okay, this part of the map is free. I'm going to get it open. Muzi went, oh, that means they're all going to rotate back to the site. I'm going to place myself below and make sure that no one's on that hatch for the push that we go for later. Now NIP constantly punishing down one Kia for being in the wrong place at the wrong time. The Kansan will take down one, though. Pino is looking for that trade on to Ren so low on health. And I'm looking to close out this round. But Rin's got to do some damage here. He's on site, low HP. Katsung from the windows, oh. but he's punished for it. Rin can get that Diffuse cold on the ground, taking down Kamikaze. It's going to have to be a 1v4, and it's not happening. NIP are absolutely running away with this. That's five rounds in a row on the attack. And I'll tell you what, Wizard. The new boy on the block has been doing absolutely incredible in this matchup. 10 kills, I think, in his favor. And every single time that we've seen him in this kill cam, in this speed, he's just been on point with his game sense. Not only once or twice, but I believe three times now we've seen him turn on someone looking for a pick, <laughs> looking for a flank onto him or something like that. He just has such incredible Jackers game sense and knowledge to know that down one here are going to look for that hero play and punish them. Uh, yeah, I didn't realize this, but you said it. 10 kills kills two deaths for Wizard. What an insane start that he's had so far. The newbie on the roster breathed new life into this uh, this NIP that has been so inconsistent in the past. And they've certainly been consistent five rounds in a row, giving it to Dom Wan. It just seems like a matter of time before we find NIP match point in GG. Absolutely, and going 5 and 1 on your attacking half is nothing to scoff at as well. Clubhouse, historically, has been very hard to attack in the recent meta. Perhaps a little bit easier, but 5 and 1, wow, oh, yeah. that is Attacker nothing to laugh at. What an incredible result. Pressure's on now, Damwon. What have you got for us? We haven't seen a lot from you. Three rounds that they have won all up today. And, uh, well, they got swept by Rogue. It may well happen here against NIP. Looking to break the spell that Wizard has placed on them. That's not too bad from you, Rin. Starting to drone himself into the ground floor. Woogie Man as well. Seems like the room clear is on for down one here, but there's still a lot of intel that needs to be collected for them before they even enter into the building. They're actually going to be leaning into the fuse as well to try and clear off any utility that is protecting this kitchen hatch. It seems interesting. NIP, they're not even going for this room either. It's very anchor centric. They're holding onto as much as they can. Question for me about this Fuse pick. Two C4s on the NIP side. Uh oh. Fuse is very vulnerable while placing down his gadget. Sarko's pre ripped a C4. There's something. Koditz going in. Surely he's a dead man. Sarko is right above him. <gasps> and there you go. Perfect. That is just so beautiful from Psycho. I have no idea how he's able to read that, but Fuse, like you said, so vulnerable. And there we go. Kai Floor just goes straight back on the hatch again. Easy as you do it. That hatch is staying closed. Looks like NIP have voted down one and know exactly what to expect. Katsung opening up the Moto hatch, so at least that's something they don't have to worry about the electric claws for. But now down one here, they are low on options. They only have Woogie Man with his, with his uh, Maverick torches to open up the remaining hatches. We've got one open in blue, also in kitchen as well. And a thermite charge, which could be used on the triple wall. One has already been used on the hatch though. So if that gets in Patrick, that's done for. It just feels like the options are running a bit low for down one here. They can't get the drones into the side because of the mute jammers, they look lost. And even if it does come down to moving into the meat grinder, like NIP has such a strong setup. All these Kiva barriers, all these strong defensible positions. That shield dealt with now. Wizard forced back a little bit, but easy as you like. He puts down a Kiva barrier and he's got another position to hold. That being said, NIP have given Damwonki a lot of real estate. There are three players that are stuck inside of Church and Arsenal, and Damwonki have realized that, okay, hang on, we've just been given blue for free. Maybe let's try and make use of this space. Damwon, what are you going to go for? It's going to have to be blue, but oh. Pino shuts down Rin. On for the retake. Yas looking to try and refrag, but Pino doubles down. Woogie is out. Yas and Katsung to 2v5. Yas can find one, but not before taking down a hell of a lot of HP. Pino for the triple and Pino for the quad kill. Wow. NIP match point and it has looked like a breeze. NIP with such a strong anger hold right at the end. They're off the back of the C4 from Psycho. Perfectly read from him, knowing that they were going to enter straight into Kitchen. 
They weren't going for a roam game, so they knew that they'd forfeited the map to down one here, but they were still ready for that ground floor entry in the form of that C4. And that all compounded in the end. They couldn't get the hatch open, so they couldn't go for their plan A. That was to go for a kitchen hatch drop. Plan B was to maybe go for a triple take, but that's also mute jammed off. Go for blue, okay, Defenders that's going to, but the crossfires are perfect. And I think they had their number, they had everything ready. And funnily enough, it was on the uh, Kaid NIP skin. <laughs> Which you can, the uh, R6 share program. There you go. Psycho is showing why you want to run that skin. Showing what he can do when he's got a C4 in his pocket as well. NIP came into this game with a lot of questions. Now, you had said, I'm, I'm confident, I believe Wizard, but, you know, mm -hmm. we can see. But <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah, yes, good, I did. Good reason to believe that, but... Knowing that NIP have been so inconsistent, knowing that they failed to make the Charlotte Major, knowing that time and time again it's either out in groups or making it into the top two, we were wondering which one's shown up. And right now, I mean, they're looking very, very hot. This is looking to be a very competitive group. NIP, six rounds straight against Dom One, looking to make it seven, looking to repeat what Rogue did earlier today. And for the possible final round, NIP taking us over to CCTV and Cash leaning into that Azami to hold on the rafters position, make some of that architecture a little more unique for Dumbo Key to clear. They have left this uh, construction single wall open though, however, and that gives a way in for Damon Kia Pino though. He is a C4 ripped. He seems to have an inkling that someone might be going for this logistics hatch. Could be an early C4 pick, which we and there's strangers to here with Dumb One. Coded, what? that is so unfortunate. The mute jammer above, actually, the radius of it prevents that drone from being usable for the rest of the round until that mute jammer is taken down. Down one here, though, they've made some pretty good progress into the building so far. The kennels wall has already been open. Logistics hatch has been open. Drones are going through now. And this seems like a very two-pronged clear to go into the bomb site. Of course, jacuzzi wall now open. The entry to follow through soon. Mijamas seems to be stopping their way, but not for too long. Swapping map! So a lot of map to clear here, and that one are looking relatively slow. Where is the hard breach game coming? There we go. Main wall open. Are they going to go for con? It's unclear to me at this point whether they're going to go for a garage take. Is the is the garage wall breached as well, or are they? No, no breach on the garage wall yet. Must be saving that for the con side. There's a lot of map to clear before they can do that, and Pino stands in their way. Someone here, it's time to start pressing the attack. They have drawn out this top floor. We have got our entries in. Coated has just dropped the logistics hatch, opening up a road tip for his teammate of Hudson to try and make his way into construction. But like you said, Pino, that's the player that they're going to have to watch out for as they go for this execute. This two pronged execute is rattling uh, um, NIP just a little bit. It's made them reposition their anchors. Trying to think about what down one Kia are going for, where the kit is going to come flooding through. Oh, that was a bit dangerous, Woogie Man, but I don't mind this too much from down one Kia. It just depends if they have enough time to do it. Well, he's going to nade off this mute jammer from below. Great usage there, but that calls out his position. A wizard's going to aggress in through <gasps> stock. Meanwhile, Psycho goes for the aggro play out of the sight, and both of those plays net kills. NIP having a laugh right now. 5v3. On match point, and Pino's hungry for another one. C4 in pocket, he might not even need it. Dom one, got to get on their bikes because this game is not going to last much longer. Rin trying to make a play in through the breach, but shot down by Muzi. Now two versus five situation, NIP in the favor. I criticize them for not being on the ball, but they totally know exactly what down one Kia were going for now, looking to take out this series. It's going to be over in just a matter of seconds. A flawless round and a pistol kill for Wizard to close it all out. The young gunner steps up and the ninjas in pajamas, 21. World champions, they will be here at the major and they're here to play. NIP was so present in this matchup in just every single way, two or three steps ahead, not just on the attack, but even on their defending half ahead of Dam Won Kia. Everything that Dam Won Kia went for, shut down by something else. They were just so on the ball with it, and what a beautiful showing of Clubhouse. And for Wizard, a debut at an event like this, a debut at a major, and his first game, he goes 14 kills and two deaths. What a scoreline. What a player. Uh, yeah, and and it, huge. It, you get a lot of nerves when you come to an event like this and you're expected to perform under pressure, to play on the big stage, to go up against a team that has slain many, many strong opponents before. And Wizard not only met the expectation placed on him, but he far exceeded it. 
Absolutely. This pickup has been so great for NIP. It's rejuvenated them. It's given them new life, a second wind, new blood. And I think that's exactly what they needed in this matchup against Sam Wonkia. Well, NIP are going to be playing more later today. But for Dan one, that's it for Play Day 1. But they've got a lot of work to do before Play Day 2. Uh, we'll break this more down after a short break. and they're putting their best foot forward, and that foot is called Wizard. He's cast a spell on Dom 1, he's cast a spell on all of us, and 14-2 and two is an insane scoreline to take that. Bit of a shame there. Let's take a minute. Commiserations for Dom 1. That's yeah. a pretty rough start to their six-major campaign. 7-2 against Rogue, loss, and then a 1-7 uh, against uh, NIP. That is not the way that you want to begin out your major story, but for NIP... What a huge beginning. 7-1 and one is a dominant scoreline. Nothing to laugh at. That is incredible showing of Clubhouse. A beautiful performance. I love their problem-solving skills. It was just oh, yeah. chef's kiss. I mean, how do we break it down? I think you look at that from a, a, a rudimentary perspective and you're like, oh, Wizard just killed everyone. But there's <laughs> a lot more to it than that. Yeah, I'd agree with that. I think that... The way that NIP played against Dan One, it's, it was more them playing with Dan One Kia than them trying to battle them in and doing it. It just felt like they knew the ebb and flow that Dan One Kia had. They knew that Dan One Kia, maybe they get a little bit over aggressive, maybe they get a little bit greedy once they see a push is happening. And so they knew to rotate a player over and punish any mistakes in rotation, any mistakes in position on the anchors. And they knew that that was the weak point of Dan One Kia. It just felt like they were so prepared for their identity. The consistency as well. You lose one round and you win seven in a row. Let's reflect back on that game with the match summary. Really break it down. You'll see all the stats. And for Wizard, the stats were nuts. Uh, what a game from him. What a game from NIP to kick it off. 100% cost from Wizard. <laughs> what? That is insane from him. Not only that, but he was playing 
on the secondary support role as well. It's not like he was an entry fragger. It's not like he was big on those cutoffs or anything. A lot of his skills were just being in the right place at the right time, having great game sense and game knowledge to know that Damwon Kia were going to come run up at him as he was starting to get the execute ready for the site. And that's just a perfect play from him and well read into the patterns of Damwon Kia. And with that game done and dusted, we've had two matches in Group A. Let's have a look at and see how Group A has shaped up so far. And I'll give you a hint, it's looking great for teams like NIP and Rogue. 7-2 uh, for Rogue and, and Ninjas as well, tied up on three points. Both teams having a regulation win. Darm one all the way down at the bottom of the standings. Exa yet to play, but it's clear Exa, you know, we're going to have a chance to, to play their matches. Darm one have to sit it out for the rest of the day. This certainly is not how I expected it to kick off. Absolutely not. I mean, to be honest, it is so difficult to predict this group in general. Every single one of them were leaning into it, I thought was competitive. At the end of day one, I thought at least maybe a point or something. I thought these games were going to be close. They couldn't yeah. be back and forth. But Rogue and NIP, they just had such a read on Damwon Kia that they couldn't even get an inch in. That's it. It's going to be a scary day, I reckon, for Damwon Kia. they got a lot of thinking to do at the end of this one. Obviously, big dubs for both Rogue and NIP, but the job is not over yet. This is clearly a very competitive group. Those two teams will have to play each other uh, and exit as well before we then go and reset the, the round robin where each team plays each other again. Damwon will have a chance for revenge, but a bit of spoilers. If anyone doesn't want to know what's going on in the B stream, maybe mute us and, and don't look right now, but we're going to show you the results for, I believe it's Group D uh, and how that has panned out so far as well. There is a match going on right now on the B stream and it is Elevate on the top of the standings. They've already taken down Eminem 7-4 but the game right now on the B stream is Elevate taking on Astralis and get this Mandy. Elevate are on match point against Astralis. Parker was telling us last night, Astralis easily best team in NA, and he put them as favorites to win the whole event. Elevate is up 6-2 against them. I'm about to top the group with six points. That is an incredible run from them. Astralis, what is happening? I can't wait to go back and watch that pod. I don't know about you, but I really got to go back and tune into some of these games because Elevate is not a team that we expected them to be up there in play day one. First two games, they, wow, that is huge <laughs> momentum going into it. What We're on earth? Yeah, well, I guess you know, the, where one APAC team flourishes, another one doesn't. And that's the story so far. Dom one had a really tough day and Elevate is stepping up. It's the same for, you know, the, the two EU teams that have played so far. Eminem really struggled and Rogue flourished. Uh, and now Astralis is doing their best to fight for NA. They will get more games later today as well. Of course, every team gets to play two matches today. So by the end of it, we'll have a pretty strong idea of uh, the standings. But that said, so many more games to go as well. Summarizing, though, what are we thinking? If right now Rogue and NIP were to play each other, who do you reckon would take it? Oh, I feel like that's a very tough one. From the back of that game, it feels like the prep work going into it was really the backbone for both Rogue and for NIP. It felt like they both had such a strong read into Damwon Kia as their first match of the day going into it. Because Damwon Kia were such an unknown team, of course they're going to prepare for it, right? But now that they play against each other, is the same amount of prep going in? Or are they just going to rely on that in-round problem solving, I don't know. It's hard to call. Well, two games done for the A stream. We've got six more best of ones to get through. And of course, Elevate and Astralis are going head to head on the B stream right now. So make sure that you're following, keeping up with all of that. But we'll be back very shortly for another match in the sixth major.